1,300. That is the number of the people the Lagos State government is now tracing who have possibly been in contact with the new four positive cases of coronavirus in Nigeria. And the case of Mora Dion Balogun seems to be finally receiving attention it deserves and the House of Representatives has stepped up and stepped into the matter. This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome. The Lagos State Government on Thursday confirmed four new coronavirus cases, bringing the total number of cases in the country to 12, and that the state government was tracing 1,300 persons that might have had contact with positive cases. However, it's not all bad news, as the State Commissioner for Health, Akia Bayomi, has also said the Italian, who was the first person in the country to be diagnosed with the disease, has now tested negative. Joining me in the studio is a political analyst, Chuka Ihono. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Pleasure you. to have you join us. I will be joined by telephone in a bit by Omawumi Ogurotimi. That is, after we take a look at this clip of the state's commissioner for health, that's the Lagos State Commissioner for Health, giving us an update on the situation. In the course of yesterday, we performed 19 tests on suspected cases and um, contacts of the um, new cases that were admitted the day before. Out of those 19 tests, we have four new positives. We're appealing to everyone that has been on these two flights that I've announced. Turkish airline arriving on the 14th of March, TK1830. If you were on that flight, please self-isolate yourself or, or isolate yourself. And you can reach out to us if you have concerns. If you are on Lufthansa, arriving in Lagos on the 13th of March, flight number LH568. Once again, isolate yourself for 14 days. And if you have issues, Symptoms, any respiratory symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, body pains, you can give us a call. It is clear that we have a combination of imported cases and local transmission. And the executive of the Lagos State Government are meeting in various groups and virtually to decide on the next step which will include the concept of social distancing. In other words, we'll be using the opportunity to educate Lagosians and Nigerians that the best way to slow down this outbreak is to stop the opportunity for the virus to move from person to person. I have the good news to tell you that the index case has now cleared the virus. Um, so we will check him one more time. And if he's negative, he will be discharged. There you have it, the State Commissioner bringing us up to speed and telling us signs to look out for to know that we might have the disease. Let's now welcome legal practitioner Omawumi Ogunotimi. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Pleasure to have you. All right. Um, it's not all bad news, apparently. Uh, the person who brought the uh, first case to Nigeria has now turned out uh, to be negative. Before we talk about the people that we need to find and uh, trace, um, is this good news for you as well? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to take it because it's just one man. Um, but it's good to know that we can treat somebody and he will come out. Um, I hope it's negative second time so that we know it's negative. Then we've treat, I, mean, I know we can treat the virus. Um, but my fear is that we don't know how many people have been infected and are possibly going to be infected because we don't know how many people out there are actually carrying the you know, traces of the virus. Amawumi, let me bring you in and ask how concerned are you that, about the fact that 
a hundred, a thousand three hundred persons needs to be traced. They had contact with these people, especially when you put into cognizance the fact that uh, the the fact of how the virus spreads. This one thousand three hundred persons might have interacted as well, and each has a history of more persons that they've been in contact with. How confident are you that they can contain this number of people, or even actually trace them? Don't forget the fact that um, some of them gave wrong uh, contact address. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So I would like to start by saying that the severity of COVID-19 clearly rises to the level of a public health threat. You know that also should or can justify restrictions on certain rights. And most disturbing, you know, on this issue is the fact that a lot of us are worried that we do not have the facilities to actually contain this. And I think that we need to talk about the response at the level of the federal government, you know, that as a government, we did not take proactive steps early enough to be able to contain this. I'm a Nigerian. I have relatives who are also, you know, commuting across the nation. And it's quite unfortunate that the recent or the daily release of figures shows that the cases might get worse in the coming days, weeks, and months. So I feel that even though it's, 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 we didn't move things into action long enough, but I feel that we can still rise to the occasion, you know, to ensure that people have the highest attainable standard of health because the government is actually obliged to take steps to prevent threats to public health. It's a human rights issue and because human rights law guarantees everyone to the right the highest attainable standard of health. So and this also includes making health facilities available in sufficient quantity. But the question that comes to mind is do we have health facilities in sufficient quantity. So these are some of the questions that come to mind. All right, uh, Omar, Omar Wumi, we will have to call you back. I think the line is a bit uh, shaky. We'll get back to you in a bit. Thank you uh, for your thoughts so far. I come to you now, uh, Chuka. I don't want to pick on what she just said, so we can co cover as much uh, space okay. as we can. Okay. Um, I want to talk about something that the Commissioner for Health mentioned, self-isolation, yeah. um, when you have any suspicion that you might have it. The NLC has called the federal government out on this yeah. and said that um, self-isolation is not going, it's now uh, far behind, that yes. what should be done is quarantine mm -hmm. any traveler who comes into this country from yes. any of these places yes. as against the um, self-isolation thing. Yes. What do you say to that? Um, I, I agree with the, the Labour Congress. Um, this country is not sufficiently developed to handle something like self-isolation um, in many ways, whether it's because we don't have that, where there are a lot of un uneducated people in the country, and then we have a, a history of stubbornness and, um, and, and you know, we're, not, we're just not used to getting down and getting things done properly. So I think that that self-isolation thing should be replaced with quarantining, yes. Uh, because I can't, I can't even imagine why you would send somebody in Nigeria and tell him, go and look after yourself, don't mix with other people, stay away for 14 days. And we don't even know how to locate people. So how do you know that person is actually self-isolating. And don't forget, there's something else. It's supposed to be supervised self-isolation. Self -isolation, yes. Who's doing the supervision? Is it the federal? Who, who, how has the government set up the supervisory section of that process? Okay. Um, they haven't how, um, what, what would they do? I mean, we have a population of over 200 <laughs> million. million people, yeah. and we know most of these are in the suburbs. Yes. So how are we going to manage this? We already have um, one that was transferred locally and not imported. A 50-something-year-old yes. man who has never been out of the country. Out of the country, yes. Um, sadly, um, I think it's, um, the lack of development over the years is going to come to haunt us. Um, we've, we've been playing for 50 or 60 years now, and we had a bit of money to have developed ourselves, to have got a healthcare sector that was working, medication sector, every sector really. Um, 
we don't have to we don't have to have had billionaires in Nigeria. What we needed to have had are millionaires who have worked hard for their money and then a nation where money had been spent to develop it. So that's the problem we have now. We're not ready. Um, if this thing comes full scale, I don't see how we're going to deal with it. Countries that are dealing with it, you can see the sorts of amounts of money they're throwing at the problem. Yeah, we actually uh, talked a bit about what the CBN is doing. If we have mm -hmm. more time, we'll get to that. Um, right. I understand we have Omaomi back on okay. uh, the line. So I'll just go ahead and ask you um, to share your thoughts on the issue of social distancing, because that seems to be the next thing to do. Um, bearing in mind that we have um, areas in this um, state and across the country where you have people living in accommodations we call in local parlance, face me, I face you, and they share communal um, utilities like the toilets and other basics. How will this work, in your opinion? So, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Can, oh, did you hear my question? Yes, I did hear you. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, thank you for having me back. Yeah, so social distancing, like we all know, is um, one of the precautionary measures that everyone across the nation, across the world, is being encouraged to practice. Hello? Okay, I think we lost her again. So we'll just uh, uh, the same question. Yes, um, social distancing, which is uh, very much against the way Nigerians behave. So it's going to be a very difficult thing for us to deal with. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's been extremely difficult for us in this office to refrain from hugging each other because yes. it's almost like our habitual greeting yes. pattern. Yes, and um, when you don't, somebody feels offended. And then, you know, like today I was in a bank and I was filling in my form. I had gone and bought a biro because I had gone out without any writing um, instrument. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that, I parked at the bank and walked down at Dola Odeku, found uh, Malam, bought a biro, and then went to the bank. And I said, if anyone asks me for this biro, I'm not going to give him. <laughs> and you know Nigerians, so can I use your biro after you? No, you can't. And then they're like, that's a very wicked man, you know. <laughs> but the thing is, I can't take chances because I believe that we are now getting very close or are already in it in terms of the spread of this coronavirus. And so it's time to start truly distancing ourselves. But how can this work in the scenario that I painted? We have these people. I mean, they have to step out of their house to go yes. ease themselves. They yes. have to step out of their house to cook. They have to step out yes. of their house to have a bath. So It's going to be very difficult. Um, even the way we run markets is going to be a very difficult thing unless we shut them all down. Uh, I think and a couple of markets yes. um, have been yes. uh, shut we, we down. We have to shut them down. Um, uh, as of today, this evening, again, using the UK as an example, um, I was just listening to the broadcast just before I came in here, and they're shutting down all restaurants, bars, and such like places today. After today, there'll be none of them open. Um, so we need to start thinking about doing things like that. Uh, and but wouldn't then, it be counterproductive if you shut down schools? Businesses are still open. Yes. Banks are still working. Um, malls are still functioning. So how is it that the if, if we shut down schools, shut down other places and these places, that, is it not, I mean, um, still like basically the same thing? Well, bas um, no, because school, that's school children and maybe university, you know, uh, whatever. But I'm not in school, so I, 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 I can, I, I'm, I'm working and my environment is also one where I need to be distanced from other people. Um, you see, the thing is this, if you look at the cases we have at the moment, you would say we are not yet in trouble and maybe we can block the trouble from coming. The problem is that at the back of my mind, I keep thinking that perhaps it's wrong information and that the government is actually not aware of what is really, what the numbers are. Yeah, the, the, um, the National Economic Council, yes. led by the Vice President, yes. has sort of said they're working with states to see what they're doing so that they're all integrated and yes. all of that. Um, um, doesn't it reassure you to a certain degree that they're actually um, doing something and addressing some of these issues that are being raised? How aware are they, do you think? The, the thing is, they don't have the facilities to do the things they're saying. So I don't see how they're going to be able to do it properly. So their, their intentions are good, 
I just feel that it's talk and it's not going to be able to, they're not going to be able to act. That's what I think. I mean, it's, um, you have to look at the country you live in. We've never really been ready for anything, really. So why are we so sure we'll be ready for this? All right, let's take a look at this um, conversation uh, my colleague had um, with uh, someone from the aviation um, industry um, on the effect of the coronavirus there. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation. Currently, screening is ongoing, uh, entry screening for travelers coming from countries uh, outside this country, I mean, countries that are, that are endemic with a disease or non-endemic with a disease. The screening is for every passenger that is coming to Nigeria. The primary screening is for us to identify passengers through the forms that they fill. We call it the passenger cell reporting form. Okay. This form gives us the details, the biodata of the person, the passenger, gives us the travel history, gives us the, the countries he has been to in the last 21 days, and also his address in Nigeria and phone number in case we need to do contact tracing. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you this. Are we likely to consider stiffer measures uh, should in case this situation progresses? Uh, it's an ongoing uh, development, and I can see from today that the uh, President's Act Force has issued some uh, very, very stern uh, directives which uh, go a long way. So it will definitely, I mean, things will evolve as time goes on. But and let me say that the Nigeria Center of Disease Control, which is the emergency operations center for Nigeria, uh, definitely uh, will do what we call a risk assessment on a daily basis. And that risk assessment will give us the yardsticks and what to do going forward. All right. Now, what, what considerations do we take into account when determining what measures to put in, in place to protect, to protect the nation? Yeah, like I said, uh, the, what is in, under consideration is the risk assessment done by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control. Okay. Will give us the yardsticks to take going forward. Now, some, have said, some people have said we're not doing enough, that not enough is being done. Like, for example, um, some people, that, we have people who have had um, automatic, um, imposed automatic self-quarantine. How, how do you react to this? I wouldn't I agree to the fact that we're not doing enough. Okay. Uh, there will be room for, for improvement, I can say, but a lot has been done. Uh, at the federal level, we have seen a task force put at the presidential level. We have the multi-sectoral interministerial committee that is working. We have also the Nigerian Center for Disease Control that is doing a lot of work to make sure that this country is safe. We have also the, the points of entry that is the airports, we have the Lagos, the state governments, Lagos state government for here, it's working very hard, and doing very well. Other state governments and other, I mean, partners are working. We have the WHO, we have the UNICEF, we have um, MSF, African Union, USCDC, and a lot of uh, local partners working. So a lot of work is ongoing that you may not see, of, of obviously. Okay, there are reports that there, there's shortage in testing kits. However, I'm interested in our point of entry, in particular now the airport. How, how are we ensuring that the testing process at the airport is efficient and effective to detect these cases? Okay, let me walk you through the testing, the screening that we do at the airport. The screening uh, is done primarily to be able to identify passengers that are coming, get their details, their history of travel, and also to check their temperature. If it's above 38 degrees or 38 or above, they go through what is called a secondary screening, which is to be able to identify and do a case, uh, a case um, study to see, a case definition to see whether they fit into a case definition for further testing. So testing is not done at the airport. It's done at specific laboratories. It's not just at the airport is done. So at the airport, if somebody is... More thoughts on the situation and how we can get out of it. Um, let's look at the prediction by the um, International Labour Organization that about uh, 20, uh, is it 25 million job losses? That's what they are predicting. Um, other countries are going into shutdown as it is. Even countries with lesser numbers, yes. some with just maybe five or ten, they're going in complete yes. lockdown. Yes. Can we survive a lockdown in this country? Not so sure we can. We, we have other problems that uh, are added at this time. You know, we have the oil price problem, which already is effectively threatening to cripple the economy. 
um, this will this will ground it completely. Um, and before we are grounded, we really need to think about getting hosp uh, hospital beds ready for possible cases that are going to happen because there's going to be a hyperbolic increase in the number of cases at some stage. That's how these things work. At the moment it's creeping, then it suddenly starts to multiply and that's when you need to be absolutely ready. So um, I, I'm not sure how we're going to deal with all this and then have to deal with job losses. Um, you know. What, what uh, steps, <laughs> off the top of your head, do you think that the government can take to at least begin to um, um, seem like they're helping to mitigate some of these challenges? Small businesses, people that on a daily basis, they, they wake up and they don't know what they're going to eat until they go out to hustle. Their, their daily bread depend on their hustle. These are silent issues that needs to yes. be um, addressed. From, from what other countries are doing, especially developed countries, um, what they're doing is that they're giving their taxes that they're foregoing. Uh, there's so many things they're foregoing so that businesses don't have to pay those things. Um, the country makes less money in the long run, which again cripples the economy. But the people have to be, you have to soften the impact that is on them directly. Now, this government has reduced the price of petrol because of the petrol crash. Uh, uh, that is even not, you know, it's but, not even but, effective already. It's yeah, only the NMPC. Exactly. Other marketers are yet to comply. Ex exactly. Yes. And even that is not going to solve the problem. It's only how much, 20 naira reduction. That's not going to do anything because I know that we could have done better than 125. There, there, there has been this uh, uh, circular on social media from yes. Kenya and one other country uh, uh, about uh, um, um, a circular by the government to landlords to yes. say that um, uh, they should don't not rent, rent uh, the for the next three, three months, months or so, so yes. that people don't. I, is that something that you think will work in this country? It ca well, don't, let's not say it can't because we'll have to try. Um, because these, these are desperate times. Desperate times require desperate measures and drastic measures. So they will have to do it because other countries are doing it. That's what they're doing everywhere. Uh, they're, they're cutting back on all those things, telling businesses not to pay taxes, telling people not to pay rent. Um, loans are being uh, deferred. Everything is being, it's, it's almost like you stop the clock and then you wait and then you start it again. And it, and it happens for everybody on every level. So. Okay, you, well, are you reassured in any way when the CBN um, uh, leaders are saying that they will continue to uh, monitor uh, during the time they were, you know, rolling out some of this palliative, monitor developments and uh, let me see if I can get the right words, design appropriate monetary policy responses to protect the people and the economy of this country. These are tough talks. Yes, I, I'm not so sure they can do it. Um, they will try, they'll do what they can anyway, but I don't think they can. When we had money, you know, if you say what we, we you know, when we had more money than, 20, than what 20, naira, $20 will give us, uh, we were not really doing much. I mean, we're all suffering right now. So let's not behave like we're in an enjoyment phase and we're about to start to suffer. We're suffering already. So I don't see how the governor of Central Bank can say that he's going to weather this storm because already we are we are we're not even weathering a mild a mild situation which is what we have been in for for 60 years so i don't see how this one he's he, he's so sure and the, the problem is he was so sure and yet he's not looking very well at the fact that he's going to be broke in closing i want to ask you this question um, um i i I kind of hesitate to ask it, but I need to ask it. It's something that needs to uh, be addressed. Okay. The PDP has come to lambast the president on his leadership style. First, um, his um, um, inability to speak directly to the people in a national broadcast the way other countries yes. have been doing. Yes. Um, state governors are the ones doing this and yes. all of that. But where there are those who say that it might be his way of actually putting a damp on the panic that seemed to be growing among people on what they need to do, especially with his um, appointees working to see um, that things get done. Also, um, some are saying this might not be the right time for criticism, but of support. Well, the president ought to have spoken because every other president has spoken all over the world. Um, I, I mean, the, the example of Ghana, 
actually puts us to a little, quite a bit of shame because the Ghanaian president's um, address, which was very eloquently put for, you know, I'm sad that, you know, they, ha they, they have a very eloquent president, you know, and on paper, he's supposed to be older than even our president. Um, and he has spoken to his people. He said, I'll tell the minister of this to do this. I'll tell the other one to do that. This one will do this. We're passing emergency laws to ensure that we can do these things. So everything you do has to be lawful. You don't just get up and start doing new things. You have to pass new laws that say, if people don't go into self-isolation, we're going to arrest them. You know, things like that. You have to pass laws for th stuff like that. So you, you are among the school of thought that things the president should indeed speak should, to he the should, He should speak, yes. He's not speaking okay. enough. We'll pass on that uh, note up for this. <laughs> uh, we'll continue uh, with other conversations. Thank you right. first for uh, your thoughts so far. All right. All right. And thank you for staying with us. We'll go for a short break. And when we return, the case of the lady who was stabbed and the matter, the police required a police report. We'll be talking about that and developments on it. Stay with us. <laughs> 